Joining us now from Moscow is Dmitry Babish, a political analyst for Sputnik International. And from Washington, D.C., we're joined by the Russian expert uh, Ariel Cohen, uh, who is currently based at the Atlantic Council. Uh, Mr. Cohen, first of all, is there any doubt uh, that uh, Russia was uh, behind this attack on the aid convoy or involved in it? Not really. I think uh, all the uh, authorities uh, concerned are still checking the uh, uh, pictures and the intercepts and uh, crossing the T's, dotting the I's. But, uh, for example, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, would not be as adamant uh, in his denunciation if it was any doubt that it was Russia. Uh, the United States government is also very careful when it comes to something that the U.S. has invested in, which is an attempted ceasefire in Syria that Mr. Kerry spent days negotiating with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov. Uh, and yet, uh, we're seeing this um, attempt at peace uh, going down in flames, literally, uh, people dying in droves, and the outlook for Syria and for the U.S.-Russian relations looks so bleak. And Dmitry Babich uh, in Moscow, do you accept that Russia was involved in this attack on the aid convoy? Uh, well, I can only quote what the Russian foreign ministry and what the Russian defense ministry said. Uh, there were no orders to conduct that strike. Uh, there is absolutely no evidence produced by the American side that it was a Russian airstrike. Uh, actually, there are doubts if it was an airstrike at all. Uh, and uh, usually, you know, when the Western media reports about it, they, they quote two anonymous uh, uh, U.S. administration officials. So, in general, I think it is too early to draw conclusions, and it would be very unfortunate if the whole peace process, uh, if, if all of it is buried just because of allegations. What do you say to that in Washington? Well, I will remind our viewers that Russia denied that its proxies in eastern Ukraine and Donbas uh, used a book missile to bring down a Malaysian airliner and almost 300 people died. Russia denies it till this day. And yet, there is very little doubt that it were the um, pro-Russian separatists that shot down that plane. So if you're caught red-handed, that's what you do. You dissimulate, you lie, uh, you mislead. But I agree with uh, Dmitry in, in one uh, sense, that uh, the stakes are very high. U.S. and Russia cannot afford uh, to uh, allow this conflict in Syria to expand into a broader conflict. This is going to be uh, against Russia's interest. Russian currency, I'll remind again our viewers, has fallen 50 percent since the beginning of 2014. Uh, and the Russian people are suffering. So if the Russian government decides to expand this confrontation, this world war, uh, Cold War V2.0, the second version of uh, the Cold War, it will be first and foremost against the interests of the Russian people and against the interests of us all, and of course against the interests of people in Syria and the Middle East. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, Dmitry Babich, uh, Dr. Johnson said that uh, patriotism or nationalist aggression is the last resort of the scoundrel. Uh, is President Putin a scoundrel? Uh, <laughs> uh, I agree with the quote that you made, but uh, certainly it's preposterous uh, to uh, insult the Russian leader simply because uh, you like that quote. And uh, Ariel Cohen uh, speaks on Russian television very often because we have a free country, uh, so he spoke long enough. What I can tell you is that the investigation into what happened uh, with that uh, MH17 is still going on in Holland, and uh, uh, we still, uh, you know, don't know the full truth about uh, who downed the plane. Uh, but there is 100 uh, percent evidence, and it is a fact, that the United States has just killed three days ago 62 Syrian government soldiers and never apologized for that. Well, so it, if that's uh, in not fact, true, well, hang on, let's wait a minute. Apologize. First of all, the United States has acknowledged that it did it. Secondly, as I understand it, it's paid compensation, which is pretty unusual. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether you're getting that from your media in uh, Russia. Well, to call, I, I to call Russia a free country, 
to call Russia, Russia a free, free country is, is a stretch. Four times longer than me. So Carry I on. get from my media all kinds of points of view. You get one, and, and you quote two anonymous U.S. officials. That's what you get when you, uh, when you get your reports from Syria. Look what you did to that country, which had been a peaceful country just five years ago. Look what you did to Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Ariel Cohen says that our currency fell 15 percent. The Ukrainian currency fell 300 percent since 2013 after that so-called revolution, which was forced on Ukraine. Well, I by think that, that's a problem we have with the Russian expert. They don't realize that the currency cannot fall more than 100 percent, because after it falls 100 percent, it's zero. So Ukrainian currency fell indeed a lot. It fell probably about 75 percent. It does not change the fact that the Russian ruble fell 50 <laughs> percent. The Ukrainian currency shrank uh, and, and it now buys three times less than it used to buy under Yanukovych. Okay, uh, whom you I just want to ask you a, a final question. Uh, how do you see the end game in Syria? Because what we know is that people are being killed, they're being made homeless, they're refugees. How's this going to come to an end? Well, I think that uh, certainly when the uh, agreement was signed between Lavrov and, and Kerry on the 7th, 9th of September, it was a, a ray of hope for the Syrian people and for us also. So uh, uh, I hope that this agreement is not yet dead. But during the last few days, we had like two faces uh, of the U.S. administration. Mr. Kerry was very forthcoming and polite until today, but we had Samantha Power who refused to apologize for the killing of 62 Syrian government soldiers. And we don't know which side of the U.S. government to believe. Right now, okay, it looks like the aggressive... Thank you very much indeed, both of you, for joining us.